Welcome to the Lone Zebra Podcast, where I share my nitty-gritty health story and what I learned from the School of Hard Knocks, things that doctors will never tell you. Hi, I'm your host, Diane Lalomia, and I'm glad you're here. We zebras need to stick together. Today is our first episode for The Lone Zebra. It's episode number 001. Check for it in the show notes. Today, the episode is Older But Wiser. And I hope you enjoy the show as we get to know each other. It's kind of like a blind date. I don't know you, and I'm just kind of introducing myself. So I hope you enjoy the show check out the show notes when you're done. You'll learn lots more and make sure to share it with your friends. Thanks for listening. Let's get started. I know you all are thinking about what's this thing about zebra and why. What is a podcast going to be about zebras? Are we going to the zoo? No, we're not going to the zoo. We're just going to talk about how it is to be misdiagnosed, mistreated, and told it's all in your head by the medical society that we've depended on. Unfortunately, we found that... We're different. We're not like everybody else. We're zebras. And that's where we get our name. This term was once coined in 1940s by a doctor who turned to medical interns that were following him on rounds one day. And he said, When you hear hoof beats behind you, don't expect to see a zebra. Zebras are patients that have mast cell, histamine issues, EDS, known as Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, POTS, post-orthopedic tachycardia syndrome, dysautonomia. There's a lot of other things that uh, people are affected with that are chronic and they don't have answers. Maybe you've been from doctor to doctor, you have no diagnosis. You're not getting better despite what you try, what diet you do, No matter what you do, nothing seems to get better. As a matter of fact, sometimes it gets worse. You need someone who understands what you're going through. No one understands except another zebra. It's so lonely being a zebra. It took me six decades to put the puzzle together, and I came close enough to heaven to hear the angels sing, not just once, but three times. When I read the book by Amber Walker, Mass Cells United, a holistic approach to mast cell activation syndrome. I finally felt like I had answers. I was home. I am a zebra. And I'm looking for the rest of the herd. Are you going to join me? Let's go. Hi, my name's Diane and I'm a zebra. Yeah, it started with me right at birth. I nearly died the first time shortly after I was born. I was two weeks old when I got sick. They called it pyloric stenosis. I nearly starved to death from two weeks to two months. Finally, a doctor recognized a female might have pyloric stenosis. It's a closing of the pyloric sphincter just below the stomach where it squeezed shut and wouldn't let the milk continue down the digestive path. This caused me to lose a lot of weight, lose a lot of nutrition, and become almost a baby for a funeral. Yeah, my parents took me to my uncle's funeral home, preparing to bury me because they thought there was no hope. But he knew a pediatrician that was in his state of North Carolina that we didn't see before because we lived in Georgia. I had the surgery on Friday the 13th, July 
13th, when I was eight weeks old. At that time, they infused babies with IVs or blood transfusion, which I needed both, in their head. So they shaved two circles on the top of my head, which left kind of a mohawk, and I had red hair. So you can just imagine what kind of little spitball I am. But I survived that surgery, and I've gone on to have all kinds of different issues that doctors just don't have any answers for. And I just lost confidence that they knew how to help me. So I started doing my research and I studied, took courses in college and got my associate degree in the natural sciences. I took anatomy and physiology. I took biology. I took botany. I took zoology. I took chemistry, physics, microbiology. I took genetics. I took a, a just about everything. I I was trying to find answers. And then I got a job at a teaching hospital at a major university medical school. And I worked in pathology and microbiology, teaching the second year med students, pharmacology students, and perfusionist students what they were learning in their courses to become a doctor. And I learned what they taught them in med school and what they omitted. And this is where the gap started. This is where my research started, putting together pieces that were missing, trying to find ways to heal or at least soften the blow. So that's what I'm here to share with you, is the things I've learned along the way with my school of hard knocks and my research, my studies, and my employment And what I can tell you about from my perspective, we all have our own stories. We all have our own trials. I'm hoping to connect the community that we can all come together and I'll open up a chat room where we can be together and discuss it privately where others understand what it's like to be a zebra. Well, I'm glad you're here and I want to welcome you and I hope you'll stay tuned for more episodes of the Lone Zebra. Thanks for listening. For parts of the podcast, I'll be reading from the book, Women of Purpose, a daily devotional for discovering a meaningful life in Christ by Sarah Daigle. And I want to tell you a little bit about the background and how I got started with reading from this particular devotional. Sarah's 12-year-old son, David, came to visit in our small little town because this is where David was coming to visit his grandfather who happened to own a little store groceries in our town. My husband happens to cut meat for this store, and he got paired with little David to do some odd jobs over the summer so he could earn some money. My husband got to know young David and became sort of a friend, kind of maybe even a grandfather or fatherly figure definitely a male influence for him. The interesting thing is that Sarah was raised Amish. She is no longer part of the Amish community, but her roots go back to the Amish. And she wrote this book, and I was trying to write my book or my story until I decided to put it into a podcast format. And I started talking with Sarah and discovered her book. And it was exactly the kind of hope, the kind of faith that I found helped me get through many of my tough struggles dealing with being a zebra. Sarah writes her book in daily devotionals, which starts out as a verse from the Bible. Then she tells a story about something in her life, and she closes it with a short prayer. These are small snippets 
that are devotionals that I chose to share with you during the podcast, and each day we'll venture onto another devotional day. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope it gives you hope and helps you find the faith that gives you the strength to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Day 22, reading from the book, A Daily Devotional for Discovering a Meaningful Life in Christ by Sarah Daigle. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31, 30, ESV. She dyes her hair blonde even though she's 80 years old wearing multiple layers of skin concealer and spending over a hundred dollars a month to disguise her age, she's willing to put up with discomfort for the sake of sporting stiff, high-heeled boots. No one would guess her legs show any sign of age underneath those jeans. She'd always been beautiful and absorbed the compliments over the years. Praised for her beauty, she believed this was what she had to offer the world. And when age began to make its mark, she felt her worth slipping away. She'd always thought cosmetic surgery a waste of money and judged the women who spent thousands on Botox and facelifts. That is, until her usual faithful creams couldn't defy the steadily increasing number of creases around her eyes. If beauty had proved her worth to the world, What wouldn't she give to keep it? She began making calls to the nearest plastic surgeons, willing her distaste of it all away by reminders of how much younger her appearance would be. She pushed on until the day of surgery arrived. Something gnawed at the pit of her stomach. Something told her that perhaps she was getting it all wrong. Perhaps she was getting older because that's what happens and it had nothing to do with her value at all. She contemplated canceling her appointment and pulled out her Bible. Proverbs chapter 31 opened to her, and she began to read. An excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. Verses 10 through 14. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Verse 17. She opens her mouth and wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Verse 26. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Verses 28 through 31. She closed the book with a sigh. The verses seemed to imply that age brought wisdom and valuable experience. What if her husband and family needed and wanted a mother and grandmother more than they wanted her to regain her youthful appearance? What if the world needed her kindness, love, wisdom, and diligence more than they needed or wanted her beauty? What if even gray hair was a comforting sign of a nurturer and a grandmotherly appearance benefited the young more than disgusted them? A deep rest settled her soul as she believed that embraced her age and calling. She remembered her younger years, how she'd always noticed and felt drawn to joyful older ladies. She had always longed for their motherly touch in her life and had loved watching them care for their grown kids and extended family. She craved their wisdom and had asked their advice. From the day she canceled her surgery, she never looked back. Wrinkles were a sign of love and gray hair showed the wisdom of years lived. Peace permeated her days, where once there was anxiety. Her family loved the change in her demeanor and benefited from the peace in her heart, and not one of them 
including her husband, wanted to trade her newfound confidence for a more youthful appearance. Kara's story resonates in many hearts. Just today, as I walked into a friend's house for lunch, she pointed out some permanent wrinkles that had just emerged on her skin. She laughed about it, and I walked to a mirror to show her my own permanent wrinkles. We're both healthy moms, now in our thirties. The wrinkles are showing, and there we stood, facing the mirror with the inevitable. Suddenly, I raised my voice and declared, We will both embrace our age, including wrinkles when they come. We high-fived it, both of us determined to live the life we admired in other older women. Confidence and joy are attractive, engaging, lovable qualities in mothers and grandmothers, and we determined to mirror them. Wrinkles will come whether you want them or not, but confidence and joy are a choice each lady must make personally. The grandmother at church, whom I don't even know personally, draws me in. She's vibrant. She's lovely. She's a nurturer. I approached her one day and let her know my thoughts on the mother I know she is. She calls me daughter now and loves the fact that I honor her age, wisdom, and experience. So many young people, she says, no longer want to connect with the older generation. I say grandmothers are needed, loved, highly valued women. We are not used goods when we are older and our beauty fades. We don't need to fight for youth as much as we need to embrace our age. Beauty begins with the heart, and the heart need never grow old. Let the heart stay young, and all that matters will stay vibrant and fresh. Lord, thank you that our security and worth do not lie in our fading beauty, but in a much greater, unchanging love from you. Amen. So just a little bit about myself and why I started this podcast. It's like God was leading me. I had done a podcast in 2010, Baba Black Sheep, and I was Bo Peep, the host. I talked about fiber arts and raising sheep because I used to have them on our farm. I had a lot of fun doing it. And I um, had all the equipment from back then. And I thought, you know, I really need to share my story. People kept telling me I should share my story. I felt that was what God was leading me to do. But when I sat down to write it, it just didn't make sense. How to tell my story, kind of like a memoir. But then I had all this scientific stuff I learned. And I wanted to share that too. But that didn't fit a memoir. So it was like two different kinds of books and I was I was really just confused. And I thought, you know, I think I could do this better making the podcast my story and telling my experience and sharing things with others of what I've learned, but getting into the scientific more nitty-gritty detail about health on my blog or in the show notes and then reference the information that way. I thought that would work. This would be a way to tell my story, to share with others, to build community, to meet the rest of the zebras out there so I don't feel alone because that's one of the hardest parts about being a zebra. Yeah, being sick is no picnic. But nobody else really understands. Because doctors tell you it's in your head. There's nothing in the test that they can find. 
That's the typical. I've had a few occasions where something showed up and I was probably near to death. I know I was close to dying at least three times. I spent two weeks in an ICU and it was no fun. Another week spent in step down before I was allowed to go home. I had to learn to walk all over again, and I had lost a significant amount of weight. I went from about 160, 160 pounds, that is, to about 116 pounds. And when I was counseled by the nutritionist in the hospital on how to gain the weight back, all I was told was to eat protein and carbs. I think that was probably some of the worst advice I'd ever heard. Now, I've been doing a bit of research myself because back in middle school, an eye doctor told my mother that I had nutritional deficiencies. So in their Enlightenment, I guess, is the best way to put it. My brother, older brother, and my mother concocted to feed me the instant breakfast that you made with a powdered stuff with flavor in a packet and mixed it with milk. This was supposed to be all the vitamins and minerals a person was supposed to need. That really didn't work. And I'll tell you why about that more later. I'll be sharing these tips that I've learned along the way. Like I said, six decades, I've been studying this stuff and living with this stuff. It's been a way of life for me. I've never known anything different. So stay tuned. Let's do this together. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks for listening. I want to read this one section by Amber Walker in her book, Mass Cells United, because I feel a lot the same way myself. It's on page 53. She writes, My resume is a colorful example of my many efforts to make changes and start over in the hopes that my career or a certain stressful job was triggering symptoms. I blamed so many things over the years and experienced false hope that if I just try harder, or if I just change this one aspect of my life, I'll feel better. It took me a long time, but I now realize that this mindset only strives to gain some sense of control. Ultimately, the greatest healing has come from surrendering all of this to God and also embracing with gratitude every bit of healing I experience and every good moment each and every blessing and wonderful relationship in my life and each and every fork in my path that has led to the imperfect place of where I am today. I recognize that my suffering has been meaningful and I'm grateful to this opportunity to share my story. More importantly, to attempt to raise awareness and provide more patient and provider information about MACUS, M-C-A-S, stands for Mast Cell Activation Syndrome. Within this process, I'm continuing to learn that this book will never be perfect or feel like it's complete. I'm sure you'll find many flaws within it, and I hope that you will overlook them with kindness, as my aim all along has been to provide healing resources for others. At the end of the day, I hope that my story helps other patients feel less alone and perhaps even gives them confidence that their future can include more answers and improvements to chronic MACUS symptoms. We are facing an era of widespread chronic and debilitating, quote, mystery, end quote, illness, massive exposure to toxins and a medical system that turns down the flame without putting out the original fire. In spite of these challenges, there is still great reason to have hope. I believe that the future depends on uniting mainstream 
and natural medicine approaches to provide patients with the tools that they need to find long-lasting healing from a chronic disease, one step at a time. Let's keep this hope alive. I'll have links in the show notes for both books I mentioned today, Mass Cells United by Amber Walker and Women of Purpose by Sarah Daigle. Check the show notes at dianelalomia.substack.com for the links. And now, this week's song is Run to Me by Hector Gabriel. All your hope is signs Can't find the silver line All tangled up inside You wanna hide You can run to me And when you feel lonely Ain't got no Don't matter when they ran to, you'll be alright. You can run to me. All information in this podcast or on the website, blog, or in newsletters is for educational purposes only and not intended to be construed as medical advice, diagnosis, or prescription. Please seek the help of a medical professional to get treatment for your particular condition. Thanks for listening to the Lone Zebra Podcast. Don't forget to check out the show notes at dianelalomia.substack.com. That's Diane, D-I-A-N-E, Lalomia, L-A-L-O-M-I-A, 
www.substack.com. Music on the podcast is provided by Epidemic Sound. See the show notes for featured music and artists. Don't forget to share this podcast with your family and friends, especially fellow zebras. And don't forget to rate The Lone Zebra on your favorite podcast app so others can find me. Until next time, blessings. Have a great day.